you ever seen those uh, do-it-yourself home repair, the DIY, DIY, do-it-yourself DIY? You know, they always give you these tips and they tell you about these contractors that come in and, you know, they might not do their job right and, you know, someone else will come in and fix it for you. Or it'll be a teaching show about how you can do it yourself, you know, what to do if you do this and do that, how you can straighten things out, fix it. Did you know that God doesn't have a DIY program? He doesn't have a do-it-yourself. Matter of fact, God is a master craftsman. He is the repairman. He is the contractor. He is the, we say, the potter and we are the clay. But let's think of it a different way. If you, being the temple of the Holy Spirit, being a, let's call you a condominium of Christ. If you're a condo for Christ, condominium, and let's just say that you're not quite up to par, you know, up to code, and whoever built you, you know, <laughs> I'll tell you, you know, as a condominium, you know, you'd have been better off as an apartment. <laughs> you don't look much like a townhouse to me. <laughs> but rather, you know, like the foundation, a little shaky. But let's just say that I, as a skyscraper, am looking down on you as a condominium. And yet we're both being used by God. Now, my skyscraper spirit may want to come along and tell you, oh, look, you should be, you know, put elevators in your condo so you could go up 16 floors like I am. And you'll say to me, well, I only have one floor, so why would I want an elevator? And the reality is, is that a skyscraper can't fix a condominium, nor can a condominium fix a skyscraper. Because the master craftsman has made each one of us different, and he has designed the city of God in such a way that there are townhouses, there are condominiums, there are apartments, there are skyscrapers, there are temples, there are pots. And one thing we ought not to do is to try to do it ourselves to fix someone else. Because what we are told to do is to turn to God and allow Him to change us. We need to recognize what we may be doing wrong and have Him to empower, strengthen, and guide us and lead us. Because see, the interesting thing is that there's all this idea of that you know, be what you can be, become what you can become. God wants you to be this, like, super spiritual Christian as though he doesn't participate with you every day to change you, as though you're the one who affects the change. And that's not true. God didn't give you his spirit to run off and do your own thing and then to fix yourself, to do yourself, and to be a DIY case so that you could glory in your own works that you've done because, after all, now that Jesus has saved you, you get to fix yourself to make yourself more righteous and more holy and more perfect. And you get to build the condo or the log cabin that you are into the way you think it should be. No. That's not the way it works. God has a plan. You may not find it out until you have to tear down that house you're building. You might have to walk away from that skyscraper you think you sleep in because he may just have a tent for you. He may just build a tabernacle for you to dwell in temporarily. He may not want you to be in a permanent dwelling place, but he may want you to have something less secure that you might find your security in him. So that would be temporary housing until you could rest assured that he has your best intent in mind by not allowing you to be content with the things of the world and the way that the world can distract you and get you involved in being kept up with the Joneses or designing some you know little designer thing in your house or remodeling your bathroom for the 17th time or having the ultimate extreme kitchen or having the makeover, faceover for your patio set. Oh, foolish. 
and we think we're so wise when we try to tell others what to do, when in reality we need to listen to what God would have each of us to do separately, that he may be the Lord and we may be following him as our master. Distraction of antipathy. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we are exceedingly filled with contempt. The thing of which we have to beware is not so much damage to our belief in God as damage to our Christian temper. Temper? Do I have a temper? Therefore take heed to thy spirit that you deal not treacherously. The temper of mind is tremendous in its effects. It is the enemy that penetrates right into the soul and distracts the mind from Christ. It causes us to turn away from the things that we should be focused on to the things that aren't important and we make them the priority when God would rather direct us in some other way. There are certain tempers of mind in which we dare indulge and we dare not, for if we do, we find they have distracted us from faith in God. Until we get back to the quiet mood before God, our faith in Him is nil, and our confidence in the flesh and in human ingenuity is the thing that rules. In other words, if we don't turn to God as being the leading, guiding person, not principle, of what we do and why we do it, then we will think that we have the right idea of how to fix and do a makeover for a Christian. Are you one of those types of people that think you have Oh, the community together, and we're gonna we're gonna do this makeover for you. And while the person is gone, you have gone out of your way to arrange their life, to change their living, to rearrange their understanding of God, and you have performed a extreme makeover for them. And when they come back, they ask, or better yet, the sadness reacts when God stands before you on that judgment day and says. Who asked you to? Are you the Holy Spirit? We need be careful of what we do, for we may find ourselves working against what God would say because of what we think we ought to do. Beware of the cares of the world because they are the things that produce a wrong temper of soul. It is extraordinary what an enormous power there is in simple things to distract our attention from God. Refuse to be swamped by the cares of this life. I know in my world, I'm always getting phone calls and information and things thrown at me to stop me from recording or doing the things that I've already said in my mind and prayed about and talked to God about doing each day. And in reality, every day, I set those things aside and don't do them until I'm ready in my timing to do it what God would have me to do it when He wants me to not just because they're needing to be done. Another thing that distracts us is the lust of vindication. St. Augustine prayed, O Lord, deliver me from this lust of always vindicating myself. This temper of mind destroys the soul's faith in God. I must explain myself. I must get people to understand. You know, the funny thing is, is most people have a clue and have no clue about why I post some of the things that I do. And I, I shared at times simply say, stating what Jesus said and saying, this is what I do. And they take it as though I'm talking to them about what they should do, and I don't. I just tell them, this is what I do. And if they feel the same way as I do, then they react in the same way and do those things. But if they don't, praise the Lord. I would be just as happy as if they were content without vindicating themselves of why they choose to tell me what they do and why they do it in explaining it, when why should they? If God told you to do it, that's enough. When we discern that people are not going on spiritually and allow the discernment to turn to criticism, we block our way to God. God never gives us discernment in order that we may criticize, but that we may intercede. The direction of our choice in sharing ought to be to turn a person's attention back to asking God for his direction as opposed to telling people our direction. One of the things that I'm very careful about doing and posting because I do post a lot about the contradictions that are stated in a lot of people's presentation of what they say they do. And I'm very, very wise in 
looking at the words as I line them out on paper to say to a person, this is what the Bible says, and this is what the Lord said. And what you do is your own choice, but this is what I would see God telling me to do. And then if that hint isn't great enough, I let it go. You know, I'll leave, let people tell me all reasons all day long of why they think they're right. But in reality, it isn't important whether you're right or wrong. It's important what God told you to do. And did he tell you? And did he inspire you? And did he say to you, I want you to do this? It's a fine line. People are so tempted to prove themselves and disprove others rather than approve a relationship with God. Always point to Jesus and you'll find that you're rarely wrong. As long as you're pointing for the person to find Jesus on their own, in their way. Don't make them find him your way, but let them find Jesus their way. But always, in everything and always, point to the Lord Jesus himself and you'll find yourself not going astray. Thank <laughs> you.